I'm a lifelong pacifist, um, but I felt that my peacemaking was too easy and I therefore took up the challenge to go to Iraq to meet Iraqis, um, to explain to them that not, not everybody in the West is their enemies and that we have a great deal of goodwill for the people of Iraq. And I went with a group called the Christian Peacemaker Teams. And it was while I was on that visit that I was kidnapped and held for three and a half months. What year was that? that this was from December 2005 until March 2006. Now, the, after the, the people who actually kidnapped us, um, the gunmen who kidnapped us, in our car were not the people who, as it were, minded us, who kept us captive. And uh, although we were handcuffed day and night, we were not abused, we weren't hit or anything of that sort. And we came to appreciate, I mean, we did appreciate that, that these men, the four men who minded us, had all suffered some trauma due to the coalition forces occupation, uh, invasion and occupation of Iraq. And three of them, due to the um, assault on, on Fallujah. So we feel, uh, we feel that they had some reason to be angry with the coalition forces but felt that didn't excuse their treatment, you know, their, their, their kidnapping of us because we weren't there as part of the coalition force. We were there to say we disagreed with the coalition force. Did you find yourself being really scared or were you surprised at how resilient you were? I mean, or were you half expecting it or were you... No, I wasn't expecting it at all, but um, I describe it as a sort of rather an out-of-body experience where you sort of say, well, is this, what, is this is what kidnap's all about? I can't say that I was actually scared for my life. You know, I wasn't a, a shivering wreck or anything of that sort, because it helped that we had three other people with us. Um, but um, Three others besides? Myself. One of them was an American, was he? Were you all part of the same peace group? Yes, yeah. yes. Well, well, three of us were short-term delegates, but uh, Tom Fox, who was murdered, was a uh, full-time, had been in Baghdad for some, quite some delegate. time. Uh, he and, was, and he was murdered because he, he, he was American, basically? Probably. It's yeah. a bit more complicated yeah. than that, but um, uh, it may well be the reason why he was murdered. Yeah. We couldn't see how the kidnap was going to end. Um, fortunately for us, when they took Tom Fox away, uh, they made an excuse why they were doing it. Um, we didn't know that they'd murdered him, so that we were unaware of it. Um, now the Canadians, the two can who were actually Canadians at that time, they felt they were fairly safe because Canada had no part in the in the invasion, and I think it was felt that I was more at risk. Um, but um, do you think if you had known about Tom Fox, that would have changed a lot? Well, I think it would have made us yes more frightened for myself, knowing that it was the American uh, murdered first, and the Brit would be the next, because. W we knew that, well, we knew that neither the British nor Canadian government nor American would give in, uh, would make, uh, would, uh, would, uh, would offer money or any other conditions to release us. Um, Did you feel that was right? Um, uh, yes, I think, I, uh, theoretically, yes. Yeah. When but, you're in that position, you probably don't quite. No, 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 no. Do anything they can. Yes, I mean, pr practically, you just want to get out. Did you feel actually compassion for them? Yes, I did. Well, particularly for the young, for the man who was about 45, who we called Nephew, because he was a family man, and I got the impression that he was doing this to keep his family 
because there wasn't any employment and I, my guess is that this was a job yes. for which they looked after him and paid him. Mm. But I wouldn't have called it an extreme case for forgiveness. I mean, if somebody had murdered my yeah. children or um, my wife mm. in some yeah. pointless, aggressive at act, yeah. I think I would have found it more difficult. But as far as the people who captured us, um, I, I, I have no hatred. In fact, I, you know, as I've said, I believe hatred to be a negative emotion that it destroys you. Mm. So there's no point. And we've also had the problem of can we forgive on behalf of um, Tom Fox? And all I can say is that from what I know of Tom Fox, he would have forgiven them mm. and certainly wouldn't want them executed. That's why I've said I'll only give evidence in a trial if there's a guarantee of no capital punishment. I didn't feel any, uh, any animosity towards these men. I mean, as, as I've said uh, uh, to other people, I find it much harder f to forgive Tony Blair and George Bush. <laughs> because... <laughs> when did you first say that publicly? I, I've forgotten now. I, but you've said it publicly. Well, I think I have said it publicly, yes, um, because that, that they know very well what they've done and they should jolly well have repented, mm. and they haven't. They still think they're right, mm. and they're so, uh, so, so very much wrong. Well, how do you think the common view of forgiveness is? I mean, it's seen as a weakness, essentially, isn't it? A weak position. Well, I was surprised when there was this you know, when there was this television thing on, what, yeah. what's it called? Hard Questions or something. It, yeah. It's on Sunday mornings. Yeah. And um, uh, the, the, I was surprised that the sort of, uh, that this, this man, Peter Hitchens, should sort of say, should rubbish almost the whole idea of forgiveness. Um, and as you say, it is, it is seen as weakness. Yeah. And I think the press expect people to be angry and to be unforgiving mm. and are surprised when people do, do forgive. Mm. Apparently the whole concept of non-violent peacemaking would seem to be a foolish concept and certainly is against the culture of our day. I think the public were convinced that we were idiots. That's the general impression. To go there at all. Yes, yes. It's funny, I was taken to one of the TV studios by a black cab driver and uh, I explained, you know, he discovered who I was. And when he, uh, later on, he said to me, so you're Norman Kember, he said, I always thought you were some sort of nutter, he said. <laughs> but, 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 but having met you, he said, I've had to change my mind, which was, which was quite interesting, wasn't it? Um, well, I've always said the saddest thing was the effect on Pat. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I can't, you can't, there's no point in regrets, is there, in life. You've done what you've done, and you've got, to put, <laughs> you've got to put up with it. And it has given me this enormous opportunity to talk, mm -hmm. uh, to, talk to you <laughs> about forgiveness and to talk to lots of people about uh, um, non-violence. And a lot of links were made with Muslims.